Hello, everyone. I'm Jun Ogawa from Tokyo, Japan. And I'm a presenting author of this, but uh, there is a Satoru Nakamura is over there, and this is our team. So first, the background. Our interest is all about how we organize the historical information as used for digital data. Here, the historical information does not mean just the metadata of sources or merely the entity markup, but rather the semantic contents of historical documents, such as event, relationships, situation, and so on. As Manfred Thaler described that the function of digital databases for history has been shifting in that way forward. However, we have to say that the actual description of this kind of information is often quite heterogeneous, ambiguous, highly context dependent, text dependent, and even interpretation dependent. Regarding this, our question is how we present such complicated information as a knowledge graph, which enable us to deal with complex information quite flexibly. It is not only us who are interested in this problem, but we might say that this is a kind of general question in digital history. So what are the more specific problems? We would like to point out three of them. First, how can heterogeneous information be represented in a common mechanism? And how can complex semantics in historical documents be preserved as much as possible? And how can knowledge and textual description be effectively linked as coherent data? To tackle these problems, we have recently been proposing a concept of micro-knowledge. As depicted in the image, micro-knowledge will extract each very specific description in the documents and connect entities mentioned in them with various semantic meanings. In this sense, micro-knowledge is a highly text-oriented model. These entities, which are semantically connected in the micro-knowledge, can of course be linked to the external authorities and open up to a wider knowledge sphere. In terms of historical data creation, the connection between the source sphere on the left and the external knowledge sphere on the right has been much realized by marking up text with TI or other standards. On the other hand, however, attempt to represent the semantic contents of the text itself as standardized data are still relatively rare. Micro-knowledge deal with any small pieces of information related to historical facts and takes each of them as a basic resource of RDF linked data. As an information unit is quite small and each is based on a specific source description, the complex semantics contained there, there can be better preserved, and various types of information can be represented in a simple and common way. In this sense, micro-knowledge is kind of extension of factoid prosopography. Many of you probably know about it. But it is not limited to the information related to people, and includes the text description itself as linked to open data. Here is the ontology we propose to put the micro-knowledge concept into practice called Himiko. As is clear from the image, we take each statement in the text as a factoid in the center and describe the relation between entities mentioned there. In this way. We also give the semantic relations between factoids such as temporal and causal relations. On the downside of the factoid, we have some classes and the properties like lemma or character to realize the word character level structuring. This part of the model will be implemented by XML encoded text data and enable us to represent very detailed text information, such as specific descriptions or terms. As we don't have enough time to explain all about it in this uh, short presentation, for further details, please look at the web visualization or, or ontology file from the links below. Okay. Based on the chemical ontology, we've created a small portion of data from two different historical documents, which are Caesar's Gallic War and the diaries of H. Shibusawa, a famous Japanese uh, business figure. First, we have TI encoded text data as a basis, and based on that, construct an RDF knowledge graph. Thus, TI and RDF triples are effectively connected. 
Here are the correspondence of each RDF resource and its textual description. So like this, entities, or even the character like this is in the knowledge graph. Not only the entities, but also the statement for each historical fact, to say the factoids, uh, is represented as an RDF resource and connected to the specific text positions. How many minutes left? Sorry, it's okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, this data can be, of course, searched by Sparkle, and as the data itself contains the semantics of the text descriptions, a query can be done on the very detailed content and con context information of them. For example, get all words described in the action type movement, or get all places, places mentioned in the factoids, or get the predicate used in the factoid where Caesar is mentioned, this is kind of like a weird query, but get all semantic relation existing between factoids, or get all relation between place and words described in the same factoids or something like that. And we can use those data to analyze uh, some historical phenomena like uh, map analysis or the network analysis. So now, the effectiveness of the model and data is clear, but how we create such data as efficient as possible? Because the data model is quite complex, we need some mechanism to reduce the cost of the data construction process and let researchers do that much as easy. For this purpose, we've developed a system called the Chemical Editor here. By using this, even those researchers who are not familiar with RDF technologies can still be engaged in the data construction process because the system will allow them to do that as a slight extension of a traditional text reading. The basic structure of the system is like the image. Uh, if a user uploads a minimum tagged TIXML document, uh, he or she can start editing RDF data on top of it. Here I will explain the system in more detail with a demo. So this is a project, the list of the project that we have, and we have a Shibusawa H project. And this is the document, uh, the second layer, and there's an item like this. So each item corresponds to the single XML TI file. And from the item window, you can upload the XML file like this, but now, oh, yep, sorry about that. Maybe this is not there or there. Yeah, sorry. So this is the item uh, window. Sorry, the interface is still in Japanese, but here you can uh, input the XML TA file. And, but we, we already have it, have it, so we don't do it right now. But here is the editor. And the editor looks like this. So there's a text on one side, and the other side is the information panel. But I already annotated some of entities and uh, factors already. But it, uh, from the entity tab, uh, you can annotate the person or places or object or uh, organization like that. So it's, it's exactly like a leaf writer or the recogito can do. But the important is this uh, factoid uh, tab. From this tab, you can create a factoid like this. So you can choose the text area like this, and you will put some uh, factoid type. So this is like a action or something, or and you have a reference. This means which entity will include it in the factoid. So had participant, and his role is like um, subject of this factoid. And the subject will be Sibisawa AG, this uh, blue font uh, text here. So I click here and save. So this means like factoid now have a uh, Shibusawa Eiichi, this uh, blue fonted person, as a subject of this factoid. And we can do, uh, we can repeat the same thing for other information, like who is, what is the object of this factoid, or what is the 
uh, or when is this factor happen, or where is this factor happen. All of these kind of information can be put in this uh, editor. So yeah, this is a quick demo of my editor, but if you're interested in, I will explain more in the last session of this, uh, in the last <laughs> discussion phase of this section. So, uh, conclusion. Uh, the contribution will be the concept, we introduced the concept of micro-knowledge, and this is a versatile model for the semantics of historical documents and how we guarantee the high referentiality to the primary source description. And even we lower the operational barrier in data creation. But there is still tasks. Um, the first one is definitely we need more case studies because this is just the initial stage of our research, so we need more data and case studies. And also development of the data infra infrastructure as a basis because we have to connect those uh, entities to the external data, such as Wikidata or, I don't know, play address places in the ancient world. So we need that, those kind of authority data. And of course, to doing this, uh, we need wider collaboration with historians, informatics, and digital humanists, as you're here. So this is the end of my presentation, and thank you for your attention.